Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to do this very beautiful. This is really an elegant scene. It's a winter scene. Beautiful reflections in the water there, and it's in the woods. All right, so we'll begin. Uh, I wet my paper here, and I'm just putting some phthalo blue, Windsor blue, all lit, you know, for the sky. But I let it run all the way down to uh, onto the snow, so there's a tint of Windsor blue in the snow. All right, so the woods here in the back, uh, it's a beautiful, elegant gray here. This is, uh, I use uh, French ultramarine here and some rose, and then I tinted it with uh, raw sienna. So you have to work it, you know, back and forth on your, on your palette to make sure you get this beautiful gray. Keep that nice and juicy and wet. Let that run down. This is all background stuff. So I'm using a, a dry brush here, very, just some upward strokes and getting some trees, sense of trees in the background. This is all background stuff. Okay, so I'm going to put the water in here, and this is, you know, water that's uh, where the snow obviously couldn't capture. So you have. You have a stream flowing through the snow and it's reflecting those trees in the back. So this is the same colors, uh, a little less water here, so it's darker. Ultramarine, rose, and raw sienna. Beautiful mixture to get your beautiful greens. Uh, grays, I'm sorry. Uh, so very carefully put that edge of the snow in. And then, the, so the, the brook is, is still here. We're just, you know, these are just the reflections we're painting. So getting that dark section in, leave a few spots where the snow is peeking through in the, in the, in the water. All right. All right, so once you get this in, then you want to get the edge of the water. And what I'm using here is cobalt blue teal and mixing it with that gray just on the edge. So it's a nice, light, cool edge. It's basically reflecting those trees and the sky over here in the water. So this is all water going in and just cleaning up that edge where the snow. Keep it nice and flat. These are all horizontal strokes here. Okay. And then uh, when you come down to this edge, use that, uh, there's a is a tree that I haven't painted in yet, but it's reflecting in the water. You can see it in the photo. So this is the reflection of it. You can see I'm using that cobalt blue teal and mixing it with the gray. It's a beautiful color. Gives you a beautiful sense of, of you know, that winter reflection. It's, it's just be lovely, you know, just really beautiful, beautiful sense of uh, reflective light here. And the whole scene has got that beautiful tint of Windsor blue, phthalo blue, which is a nice winter scene. I saw this, this is walking in, uh, in the park in Ipswich. All right, reflections are coming straight down. It's cobalt blue teal. And there's a little bit of tint in, in the water there from that earlier wash we did from the very beginning. Okay, and it has where it, it has a little turn to it. Okay, take your time with that. It's really beautiful. It's, it's really an elegant uh, painting. All right, there's another piece of uh, water that's uh, peeking out here, and it gives you a nice, a nice turn. It's peeking through the snow, but it, it's nice. It breaks up that big white shape and keeps your viewer in the painting, sending them back to that, uh, to that back area. All right, I'm just this is a dark edge here that I'm going to add right at the edge of the woods. It's really a beautiful scene. I love this scene. You know, I love painting in the snow. All right, just putting some uh, a little darker 
sections in this wetting, basically wetting that whole thing again. Same, same colors, ultramarine, touch of rose, you'll get a violet, and then you add the raw sienna to it. All right, so I'm just taking a credit card here or, and just scraping out some birch trees very carefully. Don't, don't scrape too hard or damage the paper, you know, just squeegee. Think of a squeegee when you do this. You know, I learned this from my good friend Robert Wade who just passed away a couple of weeks ago in Australia. Amazing painter, good friend, just real gentleman, wonderful guy. All right, so just squeegee in those trees until you're happy. All right, now we're gonna put in this couple of really big trees in there that are very important. Uh, I have a tendency because of the video to make them darker uh, so you can see them better. Uh, but when you're, you know, you're painting them, remember that the trees are very high and they're reflecting a, a lot of sky. There's a lot of light up at the top of those trees. So keep, you know, when you start out, if you start out at the top here, keep a lot of, uh, you keep it wet, you know, keep it nice and wet so it's gonna flow and you can add some uh, cobalt blue up there if you want and just keep it, you know, keep it running down. All we're looking for here is the, the gesture, you know, get the gesture of your trees in. These are really beautiful big trees. I'm speeding it up here a little bit so you don't have to watch every stroke, but you can slow it down if you like. Um, but we're looking for the, the gesture, okay? Big, beautiful tree overlooking that pond. All right, going back, see, it's all nice and wet, so what I'm, loose, I'm trying to loosen it up at the top so it's lighter. There's a lighter uh, value at the top there. I'm adding some raw sienna to it. These are the same colors. This is ultramarine with rose and raw sienna. So this whole painting is, is almost those, those uh, three colors. All right, there's another small tree on the right. Touching them, you can see how that dark base of the ground is important. So all those, you know, keep plenty of uh, holes in, in the tree, sky holes, and you know, and then you can go back and put branches. You're better off, as you're painting the tree, remember it's much easier to leave more sky holes than you think you need, because you can always go back and cut and fill them in, but when you, when you don't leave, leave enough, it's hard to get back to that white. Okay, all right, another big tree on the left of that one. I'm letting them, letting them come together there. Just a touch of uh, uh, raw sienna in there, creating that sense of green, warming up, especially right down the middle in the front so that that comes forward. You can see I'm lightening up the top. Just keep them nice and wet. Give them a spray if you want to. All right, on the left here, we have uh, just some grass peeking out through the snow. So just creating this uh, flat piece of land here. The grass peeking out. And then along the river, you have right along the, the brook there, right on the edge of the land, you have some really nice warm, uh, kind of a bush, you know, it's just grasses growing, but they're much warmer than the, than the grass on the, on the ground that's peeking through the snow. So I'm using a touch of quinacridone sienna here and just placing those shapes using that dry brush again with upward strokes. Make sure you, you know, you, you get in those strokes that go in straight up. All right, I'm adding the uh, tall grass here on the edge. It's very nice because it warms up. See that nice warm shape? It's coming forward and it gives you much more depth to your painting. You can see that right away. It's really, really nice. So it's, it's really beautiful. All right, well, I hope you like that. That's to, that was really exquisite. That was really a beautiful painting to do. 
I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, you can certainly let me know in, in the comments. A little reflection in that pond in the back. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it, and I will see you again very soon.